You're listening to Arirang Radio's Wonders of Jeju. This is a segment where we tell you about the lives of people living right here on the island. I'm your host, DJ Jamie. This is Humans of Jeju. Welcome to the studio, Jay. It's great to see you as always. Yes. Hi, Jamie. Hi. Yes. Oh, you're sounding very perky today. Really? Yeah. I'm trying. You're trying? <laughs> okay. Well, you're always in a good condition when you're here in the studio. I yes. hope you had a good week, though. Yeah. It was a long week, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. We did Humans of Jeju last Tuesday. Mm. So oh, that's right. Yeah. It's been over a week now. Mm-hmm. Yes. I didn't even realize that. Wow. Really? Because there have so been so many changes. Me. Well, no, I did <laughs> miss you. Okay, you're confusing me now. Okay, let's go straight to who we're... Okay, I'm blushing. Uh-huh. No, just kidding. Okay, so we get to meet a wonderful human today. Yes, we the do. Humans of Jeju mm-hmm. Corner. And who will you be talking about today? Uh, should we meet her right away? Oh, why don't we do that? 저는 현재 정유선 그리고 클로이라는 이름으로 어, 해바라기 학교를 운영을 하고 있고요. 그리고 교육에 끝나지 않고 이거를 어떻게 현실 우리가 습관으로 어, 적용할 수 있는지를 이제 보여드리기 위해서 이제 환경 브랜드를 만들어서 Love Your Soul이라는 브랜드 대표로 활동을 하고 있습니다. Mm-hmm. Well, she has a lovely voice. Yes. Can you explain? So today we meet Miss Chung Yoo Sun, mm-hmm. uh, who who also goes by her English name Chloe, mm-hmm. and currently she runs Sunflower School on Jeju Island. Mm. And not only is she teaching and educating people English, but also she's teaching environment. In Sunflower School as well. Wow. But also in order to show that you can put what you learn into actual use, mm-hmm. she is also the president of environmental brand called Love Your Soul. Wow. She sounds like she's a very active person. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, the environment is a very important issue. So I can imagine how uh, that can be very good to share with young people. So first off, how did she get involved in environmental issues? Well, before up to 2014 and around 2015, Mm -hmm. she worked for various English academies, she says. Um, Actually, the major ones that almost all the people here in Korea know of. Mm -hmm. Uh, And taught from English conversation to preparing for English test. Okay. Uh, At that time, pollution was an issue in Seoul, Mm -hmm. especially air pollution. Oh, uh, yeah. And that was because of the fine dust. Mm. So one day, tired of uh, teaching English, like the purpose of just raising test scores, she wanted to start a class online which shows the daily life in actual English language sites Mm -hmm. as if you were traveling, uh, which she had always wanted to do. So she went to New York. Went to all the way to New York? All the way to New York. Whoa. Uh, There in New York, she held online classes for parents with young students Mm -hmm. and employees of like major companies. And in her lectures, she focused on the subject of environment. I see. So she mentions she was teaching English, but it was actually more of an environmental lecture ah. that she was holding, uh, which said, which she says, like her students probably didn't even recognize. Oh wow! Like they probably thought they were learning English. Oh really? But she was actually focusing all the subjects. On like environment. Oh, that's stuff. awesome! Mm. So she had like a secret focus in her teaching. <laughs> so how was it different from typical English lectures? So, for example, she says she would actually find and go to like vegan restaurants mm. and zero waste shops mm-hmm. to show the environmental trend of New Yorkers. Oh, and she t- taught English expressions from there. Uh, The reason why she says she decided to create such lecture is because she wanted to help her students build sustainable habits than just learning English. Oh, I think this is awesome. Mm. So all this happened in New York, but how did she end up here in Jeju? So she went to New York in 2019 Mm -hmm. and was there until the COVID-19 broke out. Okay. Uh, When it got started, she came back to Korea. Oh. And since then, even though she wanted to go back to New York... Uh, she she was not able to, mm-hmm. so that's how she decided to come to Jeju Island. Oh, and so that brought her here, mm-hmm. and see. she's been here for a month now. <gasps> oh, so very short, qu- quite short, yeah, not quite short. too mm-hmm. long yet. Wow, but she's caught our attention already. Wow, mm. amazing. 
So what was some information she learned or felt from, from um, well, actually, what, let me ask you this question. Yeah. So, so she was in New York and then she ended up in Jeju. And uh, where were other reasons why she got interested in the environment while teaching English? Well, she says she often read books related to future. You know, mm-hmm, I guess she mm-hmm. was very curious about what, what's going to happen I in our see. lives later on. Uh, so from that, she started to become concerned about her job as an English teacher, actually. Oh. Uh, if it would still be around in the future or not mm. was the concern that she had. And from there, she realized that teaching English can actually be replaced by maybe robots in mm. the future. And maybe the world may change where we don't actually need to learn another language. Uh-huh. You know, because now we have all these translators. Right. And, So, as a teacher, she began to worry about what she would be able to teach and even started to think about what she has to do for the future. I see. So, she started to read books about how the world will change in 10 years from now Mm -hmm. and kind of wanted to share that story with other students as well. Well, That's interesting because a lot of apps these days are using AI technology to teach English, actually. Right, right. Yeah. So maybe later on, we won't need actual, you know, like human teachers. That could be true. Mm. Or because of the translators, we might not need to learn another language like you mentioned. Right. So what was some information she learned or felt from these books? So one thing that she worried uh, if we come to a time of like this AI and robots is that people would rely on them for hope, which Mm -hmm. she believes should be found on own. Mm. Uh, So thinking that our world could become a chaos, she read books related to robots and AIs. And from a book, she learned about a company actually in New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a company, you know, that doesn't even have a company sign. Okay. So they say it's kind of hidden, but actually they fully changed into like an AI company. Oh, wow. Uh, in, in one day, they say they fired like <gasps> this 800 super intelligent, like genius employees, Ooh. leaving just two employees. <gasps> and now everything is run by AI. That's kind of sad, though. It is, because you have yeah. all the smart people. They create something, uh-huh. but now their their job is gone. All of a sudden? Because, yeah. 800 people. So, <gasps> something to think about in yeah. the future. Um, and this was shocking for her. So she went to New York to see it and mm-hmm. actually even went to like Amazon Go store mm-hmm. to see how artificial intelligence and IoT is connected mm-hmm. and taught her class about what she had experienced and the class even discussed how we should prepare for such era, Mm. you know, while connecting it to our nature, the environment as well. So realizing the importance of environment in the future, while she was in New York, she even went to UN and learned more about sustainable development uh, environment. That's amazing. Mm. Wow. Okay. So is there a reason uh, you mentioned of of the school name of Sunflower School? Yes. She has that's in Jeju. Yes. Right. So is there a reason? She's operating it in Jeju. Right. I Uh, see. All the classes are currently online. Okay. But she's planning on offline classes as well. Well, that's Mm -hmm. kind of perfect with this coronavirus era that we're living in right now. So is there a reason why the name of the school is Sunflower? Uh, Let's listen to her explain. Okay. 코로나 시대에 우리는 다시 예전 같은 마스크를 벗고 환경이 깨끗했던 시대를 다시 똑같이 되돌릴 수는 없지만 다시 우리가 마스크를 벗을 그날까지 우린 기다려야 된다. 그 대신에 희망을 잃지 않는 게 아니라 늘 해바라기는 항상 해를 바라보고 희망을 갖고 있잖아요. 그것처럼 이제 항상 그렇게 우리가 노력하고 끈기 기다리고 희망을 잃지 말자. 그런 의미가 있어요. 해바라기는. 예. 네. 그리고 해바라기를 보면 어린 아이들이 밝게 웃는 미래의 그런 모습이 형상이 되거든요. 저는. 예. 네. 그래서 Please uh, tell us what she just said. So, Jamie, do you know the meaning of sunflower? Like what the sunflower like symbolizes? Uh, well, I can tell you that I heard that in China, it means good luck. Mm. I think it has different meanings right, around, right, the world. around the world. Yeah, as I don't well. know yeah. if there's a specific meaning in Korea, though. Mm. So, I mean, it's got all kinds of meaning. Um, right. So... There are many meanings uh, included in sunflower, and she mentions like such as happiness, um, optimism, uh, mm-hmm. longevity, peace, and so on. Mm. Like you mentioned, good luck. 
Right. So for Chung Yoo Sun, Chloe, uh, since we are living in a period of COVID-19, having to wear mask all the time and our and we're kind of like waiting for this, you know, life. To end. Yeah, before <laughs> where we didn't have to wear a mask. Right. Uh, she didn't want us to lose hope. And like a sunflower that looks towards the sun and always keeps its hopes up. Mm -hmm. uh, she named the school after it, hoping we don't give up and continue to make efforts. Ah, I see. Uh, also for her, when she looks at a sunflower, she mentions, um, she says it kind of resembles the appearance of children laughing and smiling oh that's cute yeah so she, she liked that about the sunflowers as well and I that's see. why she put the name sunflower mm -hmm. well they are happy flowers when you look at them they make you feel happy indeed mm. okay so when we talk about school we can talk uh, like we can be talking about all kinds of schools uh, from what they teach to what age groups there are and so on can you tell us more about the sunflower school in detail so the Sunflower School focuses on quality education for sustainable development to cope with like global challenges, including climate crisis, uh, em environmental degradation, uh, loss of biodiversity, mm -hmm. poverty, and inequality. All right. So at the same time, the classes are held in English as well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, not only is she holding programs for students, uh, students of all ages, but also she is holding training program for teachers as well. Oh, that's great. So two programs which she calls a uh, green student program and green teacher training program. Oh, wow. Awesome. So it seems like there are many types of education programs for diverse groups in this Sunflower School. So can you tell us more about what they learn at this school? Yeah. So f for environmental education, uh, she actually uses diverse sources. Uh, for classes as well, uh, such as the Chigubyeol mm Kage, -hmm. uh, the Zero Waste Living Lab. Mm -hmm. uh, she uses their pamphlets. Uh, she also uses book called The Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells. Mm -hmm. And she uses other books related to um, environment. Uh, she also uses news. Uh, videos uh, that are all related to environment as well. Oh, I see. Uh, she runs two programs for uh, major companies as well. Uh, she does the green OPIC class mm -hmm. for Samsung Electronics. Uh huh. And she also does the TOEIC speaking class for Korean Air employees. Oh, wow. Uh, she does a phonics class for mothers and children to work on pronunciation. Mm -hmm. uh, she also got another <laughs> program, uh, which is a green gardening and reading class, mm -hmm. where you read picture books and do craft work such as like plant art and upcycling. Mm -hmm. uh, she also has a program called Green Outdoor Activity Class, uh, which is learning English conversation while doing outdoor activities at the sea. Mm -hmm. And also you have like this mentoring program from environmental experts. And lastly, she also has uh, environmental class for students of uh, international school students. Oh. Uh, where they watch like TED videos about environmental issues around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, they do some readings, writings, and even have like uh, debates. Wow, that's a lot of diverse programs that she has in store. And I think it's kind of wonderful that she was able to in kind of um, use uh, environment mm. in her teachings. And it's giving her a totally new perspective. And it must be interesting for the students as well to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think it'd be really interesting because it focuses on like one strong subject. Exactly. So you get to really learn a lot about. And but, you get to dig deeper. Yeah, and at the same time you're learning English. So Right, yeah. there you go. So with all these programs, sounds like anyone can become a student of Sunflower School, such as you and me even, mm -hmm. and even our listeners. Yes. Yeah, so, to that, does she have anything to say? Yeah, so let's listen to what she said. All right. 누구에게나 오픈돼 있고요. 저는 제주대 와서 제주 도민들도 듣게 할 생각이고 지금 현재는 내용이 아무래도 쉽지만은 않고 제가 지금 당장 조금 초점을 맞추고 있는 거는 100명 중에 한 명의 조금 내용을 빨리 이해하고 조금 리더가 될수 있는 그런 사람들한테 먼저 이거를 알려서 그분들을 통해서 이 환경이란 메시지를 전달하는 게 제일 빠른 거잖아요. 그래서 아이들도 국제학교 아이들 
를 지금 이 환경 영어 수업을 하고 있고요. 사실 환경이라는 거 메시지를 남기기 위해선 저와 같이 뜻을 가지고 할수 있는 선생님들을 저는 모집을 해서 그래서 사실 전 세계 아이들한테 듣게 하는 게제 목표예요. 그래서 외국인 선생님도 뽑을 예정이고 이제 다 인연이 되면 저는 이거를 어 인연이 닿는 분들께 다 알려드리고 또 온라인이라는 건 크게 비용이 안 들어갈 수 있잖아요. 그래서 나중에는 좋은 또 이제 도움을 줄수 있는 그런 일도 하면 좋지 않을까 생각을 하고 있어요. Yes, please explain what she just says. Yes, so the programs are open for everyone, she says. Mm -hmm. Especially being in Jeju, she hopes um, Jeju residents would take part in the programs as well. Um, also, since the topic of environment is really not an easy topic, actually. Mm. Uh, so currently, she focuses on being able to pass, it, pass down her message about the environment to one person who can actually also pass it down to others as well. Ah. Uh, that's why she's holding an environmental English class for international school students mm -hmm. as well. Uh, also, she is training and searching for teachers who share her thoughts to teach people about the environment. And also, she's looking for foreign teachers as well, mm -hmm. so that she can actually fulfill her goal, which is for all the students around the world to be able to have chance to take classes about environment. Mm -hmm. uh, while she has all these goals and plans, currently, she's actually doing all this by herself right now. Wow, amazing. So it's amazing. It's mm. amazing, all the things that she's doing. I just wanted to, I, something caught my eye, mm. a message from Geek Diggy, who was adding value to the meaning of sunflower for us. Uh, Geek Diggy says, the sunflower is also the international symbol for denuclearization. Did you know that? Oh, wow. It's a new thing for me. It's great to know. And it says that sunflowers have the ability to absorb, store, stabilize nuclear radiation. So sunflowers have been used in the past to de-radiate polluted areas after nuclear disasters. So there you go. Wow, perfect what an name. She, she made the perfect mm. name for the school. If you are in Jeju. 88.7 in Jeju City. 88.1 in Seogipu City. 101.9 in the Daejeong area. We are talking about a lovely lady who has opened a school here and is running it called Sunflower School. Mm -hmm. We're talking about sunflowers. So before uh, we were talking about that and all the programs that they are delivering, and she's doing it all by herself, you said. Right. Wow. All right. Out of all the places in Korea, why did she did why did she select Jeju though? Uh, listen, listen to why she selected Jeju. All right. 우선 늘 사실 입에 달고 살았던 것 같아요. 제주도라는 곳은 바다가 있는 곳이고 제가 바다를 더 좋아하잖아요. 음, 근데 온라인으로 지금 수업이 다 이제 변경이 돼서 시간적으로 좀 자유롭다 장소나 시간 제한 어, 제약을 안 받다 보니까 6월 달, 7월 달 가족 여행을 왔다가 이제 제가 아예 집을 구해 버렸어요. 그래서 제주도에 와서 그걸 하고 싶었어요. 뉴욕은 못 가지만 제주도에서 쓰레기도 주우면서 영상을 찍고 그걸 보여주고 그거를 답으로 만들어서 이분들이 외우면서 뭔가 느끼, 느끼는 게 있을 거 아니에요. 음, 그렇게 해서 여, 영어를 여행하면서 실제, 행, 실제 나중에 제주도에 오셨을 때 본인도 할수 있도록. 음, 그래서 제가 항상 강조하는 거는 말만으로 교육하는 게 아니고 행동으로 연결되는 교육을 너무 하고 싶었고요. So, she's saying something interesting. What is she saying? So, first of all, she says she loves the sea. And Jeju is a place surrounded by the sea. So, she says she's always wanted to uh, come and live here. Mm -hmm. uh, also, be, uh, having classes online. Mm -hmm. She says she actually had a lot of free time. So, she and her family came to Jeju for a trip on June and July. And it was then when she found a place in Jeju, and she's been staying here and started the Sunflower School. Mm -hmm. uh, being here on the Jeju Island and not being able to go back to New York, uh, she says uh, she wanted to do the kind of the same program that she was doing in New York, where you kind of show the travel and then you're teaching English at the same time. Mm -hmm. So here she wanted to do the same thing. She wanted to create a lecture that is not only teaching, you know, like, English words and language, but also show 
uh, through actions as mm. well. You know, like going to the sea, picking up trash and stuff like that, and then mixing it up with English conversation. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So doing all this, what are some of the goals that she has for establishing Sunflower School then? So as Jeju Island plans to become a carbon-free island by 2023, and is creating jobs related to environment for like experts and Jeju residents who have interest in environment. Mm -hmm. She hopes to contribute to the environmental education for making Jeju Island carbon free island. Mm -hmm. uh, also, she hopes to help people learn the social responsibility needed to protect the nature and teach tourists to enjoy zero waste travel as well. Mm. So my next question will be like this. Does she have any other ideas for Jeju Island in order to fulfill those goals? Let's listen. 제주도라는 이런 특화된 곳을 음. 사람들이 코로나 이런 시대 환경 관심 있잖아요. 음. 그리고 왜그 채식이 왜 연결되는지 모르잖아요, 사람들. 음. 근데 그 10분만 영상 보면 되거든요, 음. 비행기에서. 그거 보고 제주도는 와서 어딱 아예 제주도에 여행하는 거에 대한 딱 책임감을 확 주는 거예요. 음. 이걸 무조건 해야 된다, 음. 여러분은. 그래서 우리 COP28 음. 같이 이루어냅시다. 음. 우리 제주도 음. 어 이러면은 제주도가 미래 없다. 음. 교육이 제일 중요하잖아요. 교육이 바뀌면 바뀌어요 사람들은. 제 지금 아이들 보면서 너무 너무 뿌듯하고 엄마들이 좀 바뀌고 있고 제가 하고 싶은 거는 이제 이런 대기업 이런 분들이 기업을 바꾸는 거거든요. 근데 그런 분들 중한두 분씩 저처럼 바뀌는 분이 있더라고요. 수업을 듣고 나서. Can you please explain? Yeah, so she talked about creating a video, like mm -hmm. educational video, which is about like 10 minutes for tourists to watch, you know, while flying over to the island. Mm -hmm. And through the video, we can educate the tourists about like environment and make them feel responsible about their actions while traveling Jeju Island as well. So this can be like message for tourists to help Jeju Island fulfill the COP28. Uh, uh, which is making Jeju Carbon a uh, free island. Oh, right. Mm. Wow. And she's using education to do that. Yeah. So having so much love for the environment, does she have a special place that she would like to recommend for our listeners? Yeah, let's listen. I'm going to go to Seowabada. I'm going to go to Seowabada. It's the most important part of Jeju. So when the tourists come to Jeju, they like to drive, and cycling, so they like to cycling. So, 자연의 경관을 맞이하면서 아직은 사람이 그렇게 많지 않아서 조금 더 조용하게 이제 깨끗한 제주도의 바다를 즐기면서 어또 좋은 그런 또 카페가 <웃음> 있는 곳이기도 하고 또 거기서 아침에 해맞이 선라이즈 일출을 보기도 너무 아름답다고 들었고 그 근처에도 성산일 출봉 예 문화 유산지가 있으니까 we heard the ro the word sunrise, <laughs> but right. please explain. So she recommends the Sewa Sea uh, mm -hmm. since it's a place she's been going to often. Uh, also, they say that Sewa, Sewa Sea has the longest coastal road in Jeju Island. Mm -hmm. So for those who enjoy like taking a drive, uh, exercising, like jogging and cycling, it's actually a great place to vid uh, view the natural landscape of Jeju Island. I totally agree. It's mm. a very beautiful area. And yeah, I, I heard her say that it has the longest like mm -hmm. um, coastal road and to enjoy. And she said, great place to see the sunrise. Right. Mm. And uh, people, our listeners can find her on Instagram. Yes. And can you tell us the address? So you can follow her on Instagram. Uh, it's at sun. F underbar edu. That's sun F for sunflower. So it's S U N F underbar edu. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Jay, for another great story. We learned uh, so much from Chloe. And I wish her the best. And I wish you another great week. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that segment. If you're curious to find out more about Jeju, we encourage you to go check out our website at arirangradio.com forward slash Wonders of Jeju. Or you can check out our Facebook page at Wonders of Jeju as well as our Instagram page at Wonders of Jeju. We're going to take you on a journey to learn more about what's happening here on the island. <laughs>